I was down in Orlando about two weeks ago with my sons. We went for a little weekend getaway and um, we went to the bins before we left. This is a baby blanket. It is in the owl thing. And the thing that caught my eye about this is that it's in the owl thing. <laughs> I have a co-worker and she has her, um, her, her, her whole classroom, excuse me, um, in the owl thing. So this made me think of her. The next thing I have to show is a set of Carter's baby, baby bibs. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't even sell baby clothes, but these were brand new. The tags still attached and I figured that I could get something. And at the very least, I can give them away to someone who had children. The reason I don't sell baby clothes, is that what you want to know? Well, because I just don't think that I can make as much money selling baby and kids clothes as I could selling adult clothes. Unless I accumulate a lot of them and sold them in lots. But I'm not really interested in that. So, the next thing that I have for show um, is a pair of I Love New York pajama pants. And they have a drawstring in them. I have here the Real Tree Camo. This is a women's shirt. And the funny thing about this is I just sold a pair of the Real Tree Camo pants for women. And I thought that I was going to be able to, you know, but not sell them as a set, but kind of play off of the other, one off the other. But the other one sold just last week, I believe. And I, I paid two bucks for those at the same bin in Orlando and I just sold them for $20. Next up I have here a pair of bikini bottoms. They are new with tags still attached and they don't have a top. Why not? Because I couldn't find it. Who knows where the top is and that happens a lot. But what I do is I get them anyways because if you keep doing that eventually you're going to end up with pieces that coordinate. They don't have to match but if they coordinate they go together and people will still purchase them as a set if you sell them separately or if you put them together as a set. I sell them separately because sometimes um, women may be two different sizes on top and bottom so I don't want to make a set for them already. I'll, I'll leave that up to them to do. Up next, I have a pair of women's sleepwear pants. These are drawstring also. They are Nautica. And these are an extra large. Why are they an extra large, you may ask? Well, because extra large people need extra large pajama pants. And plus size clothing does do very well. A lot of people sleep on that. But I don't want you to be one of them. So if you see something that's in good shape, it's in fashion, it's, it's not outdated, and it's plus size, grab it up, try to sell it, and see what happens. I learned that tip from researching before I started selling. So what I have here, and I just want to say something. Um, when I did my research, actually, it, it told me that, and like the first thing, some of the first things that I sold were a pair of, um, not a pair, but were some men's argyle vests and they were like a 3x to 4x and they sold pretty quickly and at a decent amount i just wanted to throw that in there <laughs> so what i have here is a Jimi hendrix t-shirt this is from old navy it's a collectibles totally classic shirt and i mean who doesn't like Jimi hendrix so i think that that will sell well up next we have an apartment nine pair of Plaid shorts for ladies. Pop quiz. Apartment 9 is sold in what department store? I'm going to give you three seconds. Ding, ding, ding. Time is up. The answer is Kohl's. You have to familiarize yourself with your brands because if you do that, you'll find that it's easier to assign a value to items when it comes time to list them. The next thing I have here are a pair, a pair of Hello Kitty pajama pants. These are very tempting to keep and they are in my size, but I'm not going to keep them. 
I mean, what woman doesn't love Hello Kitty? What girl doesn't? I know that I still love them and I'm a grown woman. Next up, I have a pair of Morona drawstring pants. It was drawstring pants. They at the bins, obviously. Now, one thing I didn't notice about these until I got them home is this little spot right here. That happens sometimes, whether you're a pro or a rookie. So what I have learned to do is just to mark them down, throw them in my clearance bin on my eBay store, and let them go for what they know. Um, a lot of times that stuff still sells. It's very cheap and people buy it. This will also end up in the clearance bin because of something that I overlooked as well. I don't know how that happened. But I guess that's what happens when you take your kids shopping with you, which is why I leave my home normally. But this has a kid's name in there. I saw this. I was cool with it. But when I got this home, I saw that the kid's name is also right here. And it bled through and you can see that. So despite the fact that this shirt is practically brand new with the tag still hanging, I will not be able to sell it for full price. So I'm just going to throw it in the clearance bin or maybe donate it to my little niece to sleep in. We'll see. <clears throat> this is a graphic shirt from Tool Jeans. I liked it. It caught my eye because it has bling. I'm not into skulls, but I know some people are. But I do like bling. <laughs> this is a 2XL. I don't know if that's considered plus size for men. They really don't call men's size the plus size. I don't know why not. I mean, it's really not fair. But moving on. This is a Disney shirt. How fitting because we were down in Orlando. So, of course, we had to find a Mickey and Minnie shirt. And I have a pair of plus size women jeans. Again, do not sleep on the plus size. Plus size people need clothes too. And they want stuff that's fashionable and trendy and not outdated. So these are Old Navy. Size 18. Last but not least, I have a pair of shoes. I think are very cute and these shoes are made in Brazil now as you can tell they are still dirty I have not cleaned them out and yes I will clean them before I list them I never send my customers nasty stuff that's not good for the reviews so that was a very very small haul and of course that would have happened on my first haul out of all the times I've been to the bins, I go to the bins several times a month. I know that's nothing for um, the thrifters who do it full time. I am not a full time thrifter, not yet. I'm a full time kindergarten teacher, kindergarten teacher, excuse me, it's getting late. Um, and that's how I earn my living. And thrifting is my side hustle. So I'm doing that in hopes to one day to be able to do it full time, to be able to blog full time as well. Now, before I let you go, I want to share with you the total. I spent a whopping total of $9.89 at the Goodwill bins. For those of you who are new to thrifting, the bins sell things by the pound, okay? Um, they sell their things $1.19 a pound. I purchased eight items, so if you do the math, that comes up to about $1.24 a piece. I mean, where can you get that at? You know, you could barely get that out of a yard sale at those prices. And what I'll do, of course, is mark that up, list it on eBay, and after my seller's fees are paid, that's pure profit for me. That will go directly into my PayPal account. I hope you have enjoyed my first thrift haul. This is my first one, but it definitely will not be my last. Please comment down below, ask your questions. After you do that, don't forget to subscribe, to hit the like button, and to share. And I hope you have enjoyed thrifting with me, the Southern Twang way. Thank you.